Yo, what it do, you guys? It has been just ever so slightly over 24 hours since the release of the new Warframe color, though. Now, first of all, if I pronounce his name wrong throughout all of this, forgive me, but I'm just going to go with the pronunciation of color, though. All right, I'm just going to disclaim that right now. But anyway, it's been 24 hours ever so slightly after release. I want to go and give you my first impressions, my thoughts, and uh, a breakdown of his kit and what to expect. So if you guys have never seen him before and you want a bit of a rundown, we'll try and do that nice and quick. And then uh, we'll talk about some of the things that I do like, and then we're going to talk about some things that I think are problematic and could be looked into. Uh, overall, Colovo is good. So that's the main that's the main thing that we're going to go and start with. Is he is good? Is he worth getting? Yeah, I think he's worth getting. Um, and where the problem lies is not so much in Colovo, but more in a new mechanic, new introductionary mechanic. That seems to be more the problem. So let's go and dive into his kit to start off with, and we'll go over some builds and stuff like that as well. Let's go ahead and just get straight into it. So I'm going to go and just move my camera for a second. Uh, so his passive is you get 75% att heavy attack efficiency and 100% heavy attack wind-up speeds. So if you like melees, this is a melee Warframe. It's very centered and oriented around melee. If you don't like melee, then you may not initially like what Calervo is going to be doing for you. So he kind of falls into those brackets of like, I don't know, Wisp, Vol, Valkyr, kind of, you know, you're, you're looking to do a lot of melee kind of things. So... Anyways, the passive is good for the wind-up speed. The heavy attack efficiency is really nice because it means you can keep your combo counter for free. So that's also really good. And that's going to come in handy because when we look at its first ability, which is Raffle Advance, to sum this up pretty quick, um, if you go ahead and tap it, you'll basically go ahead and wind up a heavy attack and then teleport to the enemy and hit them. If you go ahead and hold it, you teleport. This is also the subsume ability. Um, although you can subsume it, it won't have as much range as it does there. So keep that in mind, all right? It also gives you 200% melee critical chance as well. And there's a duration for the uh, melee cr critical chance added onto it. So how this would look like, just gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna show you in inverse order. The teleport looks like this. There's no animation towards it and you can't heavily spam it. So I'm gonna try and press this as fast as I can. Oops, didn't mean to do that, but I'm going to try and press this as fast as I can. And as you can see, there, there is a bit of a, there's a bit of a delay. I don't know if you can see like ability not ready down there. So it, you can't overly spam it, unfortunately. Um, but yes, the free teleport, and I mean like free teleport, look wherever you want and you can teleport there. It is really, really nice. And it'll be interesting to see what some speedrunners and people like that can go and do with this ability. Otherwise, what he does go and do is you look at an enemy, you tap it, winds it up, heavy attacks them. What's interesting about this as well is that um, although, yes, it can ramp up with strength and so forth, you don't really need strength on this, this ability for what it's worth. You can do, I'm just saying you don't need to because it's the utility for your kind of heavy weapons. So all of the damage is mostly coming from the heavy weapon itself. Overall, it's a great ability. It's not really one that I'd be looking to subsume off, but in some builds, I will be doing it and I'll kind of explain why a little bit later. So great ability, that's how that works. Second ability, Recompense. Now this one takes a little bit longer to explain because this is where the problems start beginning uh, and also end. But I'm gonna kind of skip Recompense and go straight into Collective Curse uh, next. So Collective Curse and the way that this basically works is he'll send out, um, what is it called? Yeah, it's like a bind. It's like a curse that kind of tethers onto enemies and binds them. So it'll initially, it'll initially stagger them is what it'll go and do. And then have you ever used Mark for Death? Have you ever used Korra's Strangle Dome? You know when you kind of like hit one enemy and then it inflicts damage on another enemy? It's basically that. Um, so if I go ahead and just do this, you can see, can you see like all, all of those guys are tethered right now? And if I could go ahead and hit just this one, I might end up hitting this one because I'm swinging quite wide with my heavy attack, but I'll try. Feel that? Like really good way to go and chunk a whole bunch of damage over towards them. Um, now this can be increased damage wise. Um, if I go and show you here, Collective Curse, uh, the damage redirection, 50%. That alone is really good. 25 meters base is also really good. And duration of 25 seconds is also good. You won't really need as much duration on this because the odds are once you've applied Collective Curse, you're kind of looking to nuke from there onwards. Um, you know, I'd say anything around like 10 seconds to 15 seconds is pretty healthy for us. But 25 seconds is a really big quality of life. Um, so big fan of it. You can put something like Transient Fortitude on your builds and increase the strength and hurt the duration. And it barely does any, you won't, all you do is benefit from it. Um, there is a 65 degree angle and it can, I believe, actually work through walls. So if I go ahead and do this. 
Oh, maybe not a double wall. It did work there. We did it. Okay, now it's... Oh, okay, so I've actually learned something here. So it can work through doors, is it? Yeah, it's... I don't know. It seems a little bit weird. There were... I was doing it in Steel Path on um, Mott, and there were some times where I was literally being able to do it through the wall, and it was collective cursing onto enemies. Other times, not as much. So being able to test that there... Again, this is first impressions. If I get things wrong, I get things wrong. But again, we can learn together, right? But yeah, so... There are times where you can go and spam that through some surfaces, though. Other surfaces, maybe not as much as you can see there. So you have to play around with that. But I definitely have been able to go ahead and make it work through some surfaces. Anyways, Collective Curse, really bread and butter on him. You'll be spamming this quite a fair bit because there's almost no reason not to. Um, wouldn't mind if there was a drain ability in one of these abilities but we'll kind of get onto that in a moment and then this ability down here is called storm of yuko um storm of yuko basically just ha rains daggers basically all around you so if i just tap it real quick rains daggers all around you now for what it's worth it's got good duration it's got pretty decent ish range because it's an aerial 10 meters kind of collectively around you so forth but what's actually really nice about that is um the damage it's guaranteed slash procs uh, which is really really nice so if i just pull them in you see how they're like relatively spreads if i go and press this um it distributes pretty evenly all across it see how like this one's eight nine ten eleven twelve this one's twelve this one's twelve this one's also twelve that's also twelve that's twelve that's twelve it's very consistent um and i really really do like that um so i know visually sometimes it looks like a dagger's kind of landing over here but sometimes it's still just refreshing on them anyways great quality of life for us so this ability is really nice but obviously this ability is zone control so his first ability not really zone control third ability second ability not really zone control he's very close quarters get in your face it's all about melee it's all about getting in their face using recompense which i'll show you now in a second and uh things like storm of uh, yuko which you can go ahead and uh like um zone control basically so if you had like a corridor or something let's say that i wanted all of these enemies to funnel down here the idea is that i want to try and go ahead and choke point this with uh this what you will notice though is it it casts where i summon it which is kind of a little bit annoying i wouldn't mind if i had the freedom to like look ahead and then cast it there without me having to be here to do it there's a reason for that it's because of the second ability um unfortunately so let's go into it now we got recompense a little breakdown of recompense the idea is that basically he'll summon these daggers around him i'll show you on screen right now he'll summon these daggers around him if the daggers don't find an enemy they'll turn around and they'll hit you and damage you no this ability cannot kill you so i can spam it if you want me to a couple of times it cannot kill you so now i'm two hp and you'll see it won't kill me now keep in mind though it is very easy to make the, uh, the daggers hit an enemy. So it will heal me, and then it will basically give me overguard. Now imagine overguard as overhealing. You know how you got like uh, over shields? So when your shields go from blue to purple, kind of imagine it like that. That's basically what overguard is. So watch, if I do this, there you go. Now in the top right, I've got my full health, which is 675, but I've got 1,327. This can stack all the way up to... 5,000 and currently it cannot go any higher. Now, this is where the problem starts to come in, right? This is where the problem starts to come in. So his first, third, and fourth abilities, really, really good. Really good offensive, aggressive, close quarter frame. Now, if you're offensive and you're aggressive and you're going to be in the enemy's face, what is it that, that is going to happen to you more often than not? Well, it means that you're more susceptible to damage from enemies. You're going to be in close quarters, right? And even enemies that are really far away from you, you're going to have to gap close to get next to them if that's what you're looking to so do right this ability here because like i said imagine it as over healing it doesn't synergize with anything in its current state it doesn't synergize with damage reduction it doesn't synergize with any there's no gating that's involved on it not like shield gating there's no gating um uh, adaptation doesn't work on it uh, there's no synergistic values to go to make this a little bit better uh forgive me i do have uh, some notes here to go ahead and carry on talking about it so Overguard does give you an initial health pool over your health. So in order for them to attack my 675 health, they have to remove the 5,000 Overguard health first, which is great. That's a good start. So it's an overlayer. It's its own health pool. What this is, is actually Rhino's Iron Skin technically in its own way. Rhino's Iron Skin is basically a health pool on top of what you're doing, right? 
Now, Overguard also has the, I think it's all status effects, but it has immunity to status effects, especially like knockdown. So you won't have to run things like Prime Sure Footed on him so long as you've got Overguard active. There's a bit of an issue there as well, though, because as soon as the Overguard is down, you're now just squishy health and you don't have Prime Sure Footed, which means that if they remove your Overguard, then knock you down, yeah, you're dead. You're like guaranteed dead. And I don't like that. And it's really like, oh my God, it's like you have to be very, very cautious. So. The armor doesn't apply to overguard damage reduction doesn't apply to overguard invulnerability gating and it's also capped at 5000 unfortunately it's not so much that it recompenses bad it's that overguard is a new survival ish mechanic that they're throwing in we always had health we always had armor we always had shields we always had these ways to survive but we didn't have overguard until well sorry the Krees gave us overguards, but we didn't have overguards till now. There's only like five warframes in the game that are technically, well, sorry, four warframes in the game that are affected generally by overguards. Rhino's Iron Skin, Frost's uh, Icy Avalanche, his fourth ability with the Augment, that now gives uh, overguards. Um, Atlas's Rumba, Rumbler, uh, I think it's like, it's, I can't remember if it's the Augment or not, that also gives uh, Overguards. Calervo's second ability, Recompense, also gives uh, Overguards, I think I called it Overloads, Overguards. And then there's a Decree in Deviri that whenever you kill ping, uh, enemies with um, uh, with melee, you also get Overguards. So few Overguard things implemented into the game, but it's so new. And because it's so new, I feel like it's been a little bit overlooked. Now, I do not like it, like it when people go ahead and say, oh, the devs don't play the game, because that's just simply not true. The devs obviously play the game, and there's a lot of people who are testing things and so forth. My concern is, where were they testing? Because it does feel like that this is overlooked. Um, my issue, and I'll just go and show it here, and I'll show you literally with just one heavy gunner, right? Just one heavy gunner, steel path, 195, right? This is 195, right? Whoops. All right, let me go ahead and summon this bad boy. And uh, I'm going to go and make sure that he can shoot me. Look at my overguards. Okay, well, once he starts popping, it can go down pretty quick. You know how shields have got shield gating and so forth and stuff like that? You'll notice that that gating, you miss it quite quick when you play Calervo. Now, keep in mind, that's only one level 195. It's not a great demonstration. It's not a great demonstration. Until you go into Steel Path and now there's multiple level 140, 150 enemies that are beaming you from different directions of hit scan or whatever else it may be. All it normally took was one Eximus unit to go ahead and get a little bit of line of sight on me and I was gone. And it didn't matter if I had 5,000 overguards. It didn't matter about that. I was gone. So the testing that they done with Calervo feels like it was extensive. It feels like it didn't really reach out to Steel Path and beyond, which I found a little bit bizarre. I'm not, again, I don't like the whole accusing of developers like saying that they don't play the game because again, it's not true, guys. Obviously, they play the bloody game, don't they? Um, and yes, I'm a little bit biased. I got some friends over at DE, all right? So I don't like people shit talking them. I'm just going to be honest. But yeah, I do. I find this a little bit. This has been overlooked. So what do we want from this? What would I like to go and see from it? Well, first things first, offensive, close quarters, melee, love it. Like you sold the frame uh, to a lot of people. However, survivability, absolutely. They're going with the motto of he's a glass cannon, which is true. He is a glass cannon, but in Warframe, Glass cannons, not really that great. Just just not. It, it's not how it... We're in a horde game mode where there's lots and lots of enemies, lots of different directions, lots of different angles to cover, and I can't do all of that. You can't expect me to do all of that. Um, we we have been spoiled by Shieldgate, and I, I, believe me, I love Shieldgate, and, I, and I'm not going to go ahead and say that, whatever. But we compare it to the likes of Shieldgate, and then no. This is one of the worst forms of survival right this is where like i was going through my notes one like we go over like invisibility we go over to like shield gating killing an enemy if they're dead they can't hurt you hard crowd control root snares taunt stuff like that the enemy can't really help you as we trickle down the list further and further and further we get towards this stage where like overguard is basically a little bit better than base health and even then some base health has like tenno protection or something like that on it so i'm not 100 sure so overguard is like bottom of the barrel right now yes it gives you protection and like status immunity but that's basically about it so suggest suggestion 
how can we make Overguard better? Well, I challenge you guys. What do you guys think about Overguards? Um, now that you know what it sounds like and the core issue with it, what would you like to see from it? We've had a discussion about it. We could either introduce new mechanics into the game uh, that don't exist from like other games or so forth. We could go and see what that would look like. Otherwise, what we could go and do is make sure that Overguard can be what we want to go and sorry, my phone's going off. What we want to go and do is make sure that Overguards can be um, applied in uh, different ways. Oh, sorry. <sighs> my phone's going on. I'm doing all of this in one take, so forgive me. And um, what we want to go and do is make sure that Overguard can be synergistic with other things, right? So we want it to go and be synergistic with armor. We want sustainability to potentially be thrown onto it as well. So if I go ahead and get... Um, uh, overguard up if i could sustain more with like gloom or survival or, like leech and you know maybe that could go into the overguard and keep overguard up so i don't always have to keep respamming recompense because now we go into builds as i was going into builds with him i was having a little look at all of the different things that we could use to synergize with Kalevo, and there was a couple of issues um as i went through like the line yes we could go for offensive right so let's talk about the pros and cons of him really quickly and then we'll go over this and then basically my first impressions are done so in terms of offensive, he's great. One, three, and four, all good, right? And he's a melee frame. So those are like the two bigger pros towards him. He's, he does some really, really good serious damage as well, right? Now, in terms of other things, because you're spamming quite a lot in terms, especially like two and three, anytime that you're like pressing your two button, you're almost frantically needing to press it again because yes, you've got the 5,000 overguards, but oh my god, enemies are hitting you again. And you're like, well, I need to cast it again. So you can't even get like other abilities off sometimes. He doesn't have hard crowd control inside his kit. He has staggers. So like this can stagger an enemy and so forth. But staggers are like temporary kind of stuns, if you will. Like an enemy does this, comes out of doing that, and then just shoots you again. So because of that, you're always like... Like you want active this frame right now is super active it's a little too active and again it's frantic it's what what a viewer of mine said and i really did like the word frantic here so efficiency you'll be spamming a lot overguard not great in its current state and lack of hard cc so when you apply these three things towards it as well it just gets hectic you're, you're fighting it really hard to be alive. Yes, there are other methods. You can go and use things like uh, primers and whatnot and try and have things like radiation procs go and stop enemies from hitting you. If you play in a group, you might not notice it. It's not as bad, sure. But let's take those things away to the sides. And yes, that can rectify it, but it's only a band-aid of rectifying. Let's actually focus on the core state of Overguard as a whole. It's just not that solid enough on its own. So. We had a little look. Does he need more offensive in his kit? Not really, no. So you could do your raw, your war cry, whatever. If you're doing like normal steel chart stuff, you could go ahead and do that. Um, sorry, star chart stuff. Otherwise, utility, things like Lycus Hunt is really, really good. It pairs very well into uh, Calervo. Uh, as much as I really do like it, it's for Matic to melee. You can throw uh, Equilibrium Prime, Prime Flow on, uh, throw things like Reaper in there potentially as well. But keep in mind, once you've got Recompense uh, over, uh, any health, any sustainability, any armor, that will all come afterwards. So it has to get rid of Overguard first, right? So just always please keep that in mind because that's what matters here on Gloom because Gloom doesn't synergize with it as of the current state. Now, Archon Intensify is a really good mod to go ahead and throw with him. It actually synergizes very well because ability through strength, uh, you get 30% ability strength. And if you go and restore health, you also get an extra 30% ability strength. So Archon Intensify is fantastic on him. Iron Brawl mods are going to work really well with him. You could go and use things like health conversion. I've tested lots of different stuff to try and see like armor and this and that so forth you could do there's a lot of different things you could do adaptation as well if you wanted to it'll give you a base layer but then it almost feels like again like recompense right now is just almost not even worth spamming if you go for like pure armor and if you want to do hunters adrenaline and and qu quick thinking you could you're, you're you're really pushing you could but it is there right so like is interesting i would like like if to go ahead and actually be the main thing to throw on him but as of right now i can't do it because i die Gloom is another build that we kind of try to pair in here. Rolling Guard is not needed for this by all means, but again, I was trying to survive with it. Gloom is great because it slows the enemies down, 
but then that's about it there's no sustainability or anything else like that as well and keep in mind he can just heal from recompense as you continue to spam it and this doesn't do anything to overguards so all you're basically doing is slowing them down gloom doesn't help either because unfortunately if you do go and recompense right and if i do want them to go ahead and hit my health and then try and heal as i like hit them back and so forth and then you hit my health i go and get energy my gloom stays up so forth but i'm still also spamming other abilities so i end up running out of energy way too quick and i actually don't want recompense up so if you go for a gloom build taking recompense is counterintuitive it's not great to go and hear that but it is like that um it can work just you don't recompense it terrify i actually, i liked terrify for what it's worth but i kind of fell into the bracket of again i am struggling for energy it just kind of falls into that uh, area i actually went for a zone control one here so you see on these two builds i actually got rid of the fourth ability because the fourth ability this one here is about zone control and these two uh this ability is not about zone control so this 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 and this you're always on the move and always going forwards same goes with this one this 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 and this you're always on the move always going forwards this one though terrify um i kind of went for zone control on it you don't have to do this you could go and get rid of this and put terrified there as well if you want to but again you're spamming an awful lot and energy can be a bit of an issue here you can mess around the build more and if you can find something that works out better for you that's fine these are just demonstration builds and stuff that i was having a little look at and i was trying to cook i was trying to cook boys all right it didn't quite go as according to plan but i did try and cook and then finally i ended up on this build and this to me was actually the best build that i could go and sit on it's the quiver build the way that this basically works is for this build and all you need to go and do is essentially you have yourself some energy let's say that um this is blocked off this is blocked off I'm sitting here and enemies are coming from there. All I want to go and do is basically put a quiver on the ground here, maybe put a quiver on the ground there, jump over to this quiver, cast my storm there, sit back here, and as enemies trickle towards me like this, I can also recompense them so that they will also take extra damage uh, towards the recompense that also, uh, not the recompense, sorry. They'll also take extra damage. I'll show you here. Them real quick uh, they'll also go and take extra damage from all of the daggers so if i go ahead and just do this real quick and then i go and do that and a bit of that look at the damage numbers it just it just it melts them now in steel path this was actually better for me because the survival that i had an issue with i didn't have as much of an issue with i could sit in my quiver they can't see me if i come out of my quiver i can recompense and hit them and get a little bit of overguards go collect some loot or something or if this has fallen off or like an acolyte spawns in and i need to go ahead and get in, get out of trouble i had rolling guards if i needed it or if you have Vazarin, you can switch out and then dash into your Warframe and then you will also go and get protection. I'm not on Vazarin right now, but you could also go ahead and do that and try and have some survivability towards your Warframe, which will allow you to go and cast your fourth and so forth. This to me was one of the better builds that I got, that I went uh, ahead with. Do go and keep in mind, I do have two Amber Shards in him right here. This is my natural talent because this ability can take a hot minute to go ahead and cast, all right? So you want to go and lower that threshold if you can. But overall, this was the ability that i ended up sitting on that doesn't mean i'm done with him first impressions so how have i found calavo how was he how is he i would say he's about middle of the pack right now guys i say he's about middle of the pack i don't think he's great i don't think he's exactly bad i like what they're trying to do and i always applaud the of trying new things overguard is essentially new asleep at least on warframes but imagine it like rhino's iron skin applied to other things right so don't hate it do like it um issue is though he lacks survivability and the glass cannon is not a comfortable thing to sit on i'm sorry it's just not because uh, i can i can technically take the the format of glass cannon with so many other frames that also kill and survive just because gating exists just because it exists so yeah we had glass cannons in the past they didn't do very well back in the old meta of warframe do you remember when everyone used to run invisibility and stealth uh, so invisibility and gas do you remember those like gas multiplier metas yeah there's a reason why that scaled so well and then we kind of moved out of that as it got like nerfed and then you know shields were just kind of like hey if an enemy hit your shields and then it would then go into your hp and then it's just like you could still get one shot nowadays though you can't get one shot if you have one shield and they hit you for one trillion damage that that one shield soaks that trillion damage now you're invulnerable just for a brief period. If it was max shields, it was 1.3 seconds. If it's not max shields, it's 0 0.3 seconds, right? So shield gain is just really, really good. And I do like the idea of a glass cannon, but oh my goodness, 
we need something more. I'm sorry, but we just do. We really do. So I hope that they go and look into it. I believe that DE will go and look into it. But enough about my thoughts. I've cooked way too long. Almost 25 minutes. Oh my goodness. Sorry that this video was really long. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you do like more videos like this, can you guys just let me know? I spat everywhere there. Can you guys just let me know? All right. Uh, please go and leave a like. Share with a friend. Anything else like that. But my, I'll leave you guys on this. How have you guys been finding Calavo? And what do you guys think about Overguards? Is there any suggestions that you guys would like to go and see about how to maybe make Overguard a little bit better or make Overguard a little bit more synergistic within Warframe? Anyways, I'll leave you guys on that for. But thank you guys for watching today's video. Calavo is out. We'll try and go and get some bills on him a little bit later. I do believe that they will look at him. And hey, don't pitchforks them for trying something completely new. I applaud it. But yes, I do feel like it's been a little bit overlooked. So hopefully we go ahead and get a good Calavo down the line. But anyway, chat, that's it. I called you guys chat. That's it from me. I'll see you guys again in the next video, right? Thanks for hanging out. See you guys.